Everyone always talks about line twist, line twist, line twist, and I've kind of touched on it a bunch over the course of today. And, and the thing is about a spinning ride, like I already said, there is no way to avoid the fact that it twists the line. It's in the dynamics of taking a filament and twisting it around a spool to 90 degrees. It's gonna twist, look up torsional rigidity, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's gonna cause you a problem. The way you handle it is you don't ever allow slack line. If you allow slack line, you're going to have problems with twist. If you don't, you won't have problems with twist or you'll very least minimize those problems. The way we do that is always by running the bale manually. We are not going to run the bale using the handle. I'm not gonna do this and then use this handle. That first wrap, in fact, that one didn't even catch the spool. That first wrap is gonna be very loose, okay? That loose wrap is what's gonna cause you problems. So when I throw it out here and that's going down and now I close like this, that's gonna cause me problems. What I really need to do day in and day out is learn to use this bale this way, okay? And your thumb on the spool of the reel right here to control the line. If you learn those two things, you'll never have a problem. So it doesn't matter if I'm doing a little overhand or underhand pitch like that, I still do it. If I'm doing a big giant bomb long, long bomb, I'm still gonna feather the spool, catch the line, close the bale, Again, I don't have any slack, okay? That is very, very, very key to keeping you having a problem. Now, braided line is a little bit better about it. Monofilament and fluorocarbon are both more rigid and therefore they tend to cause you more issues with twist. Having said all of that, using the technique I'm showing you right here, you will save a lot of fishing line, I promise you. The next thing we're gonna talk about besides the grip is the fact that the line roller, which is the part in the bale that the line comes out of, should always be at the top when you get ready to initiate a cast. What I don't wanna see, pull some line out, I don't wanna see my line roller from the side and me trying to grab the line here and then opening my bale because now I have this weird slack loop right here and that's bad juju. We don't want that. We want as little straight line right here as we can and as little moving parts. So I'm gonna pull the bale around to the top and I'm gonna catch the line. Now, let's say we run to a scenario where, geez, my, my lure's all the way up against the tip of my rod. I don't, I don't have enough room, I gotta open my reel. Just grab your line and pull a little out. If your drag's too tight for that, your drag's too tight, period. So just grab, pull out what you need, get your line roller to the top, hook your finger on there and go from there, okay? Very simple, very, very simple. Another key thing when I say grab your line, this little slot in your finger is not very sensitive, nor is it very smooth. If you're going to rob a bank and you wanna spin the dials, you watch the old burglar show, he sanded his fingers to make them nice and, and, and uh, sensitive. Well, that little soft spot on the tip of my index finger is where I want my line to sit when I'm grabbing this line right here so that I can feel it for my release every time. The release point's gonna be really important for trajectory of your lure, so you wanna be able to feel it. If you bury it in that corner of your finger right there, there's gonna be a high percentage of the time where you either don't feel it at all or it's gonna hang on its way out of there and you're gonna get that cast that slams into the water in front of you or something fun like that. So put it on the meat of your finger. If you happen to be a guy that maybe shoots high-powered rifles, do some deer hunting or something, same thing with your trigger, right? It's right on the sensitive part of your finger. Same thing here, very, very important.